guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Gabby. Today we are back with another life update Q&A all about my pregnancy, third trimester, and kind of what to expect moving forward on my YouTube channel. So I asked you guys to ask me some questions over on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, and I did compile some of the most asked questions to answer in today's video. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so let's start with the life update part first, I guess. So I am 33 weeks pregnant. I am pre-filming this, so you won't actually see this until I'm like 36 and a half weeks pregnant, but I did want to get this pre-filmed because I know there's a lot of things coming up. But honestly, I feel like this has flown by. I can't believe I'm 33 weeks and literally baby could come at any time at this point. And that's like crazy to me that, you know, maybe in a month, like only four weeks, we could have a baby in our arms and I actually have to push this baby out, which is also kind of crazy to me, but I'll get into that kind of in the Q and A. Otherwise, I feel like it's been a pretty good pregnancy so far and we are mostly ready for baby to come if he did need to come now, if he had to come home, you know, in the next month or so that we would be ready for that to happen. Otherwise, yeah, I think we are just mostly sitting ducks until baby arrives. I have like cleared my schedule for July in preparation. Like I'm not committing to anything because like I said, he could be here at any point and I think it's nice to not have to do anything. It is like officially summertime. Oh, the other big thing is that our landlords are apparently selling our place, included with like their place obviously because we are in a carriage suite, so we're above their garage and they notified us of that. So we're kind of just also waiting to hear what's going on with that. If we are, you know, getting evicted, slash served notice and we have 90 days to move out, which is like really unfortunate timing because baby could be here or even moving with like a newborn at like two months old in the middle of winter just does not sound fun to me. But best case scenario is that, you know, they sell the house and be, and the new buyers want to keep us as tenants for a little while longer. We did have plans to move anyways, kind of in the next year or so but we wanted to kind of do it in the spring and when baby's a little bit older i don't know it's just not so much of a big adjustment all at one time because not only is it an adjustment for our family but like just financially too i think like rent here is crazy so it's going to be definitely a big adjustment financially having a baby and moving expenses and you know, paying for a more expensive place because we will need a bigger place, etc. So that's kind of like the next like major thing that's kind of looming over us at the point at this point. But other than that, it's been pretty good. Like I said, it's gone by fast and that's pretty much the update. All right, the first question I have here is what are you most excited for and what are you most nervous for? Definitely most excited to actually have the baby in my arms and being able to hold him and just like cuddle with him and being able to introduce him to the rest of our family and just like starting this whole new chapter. I think it's super exciting, but also at the same time, definitely scary. It's going to be a change for us, of course, and I think that's something I'm also nervous for, but also like just like postpartum recovery. I'll get into that a little bit later. Someone did ask questions specifically about that. And then just like labor and delivery in general, I think there's a lot to know and understand and like obviously medical interventions that can happen. So we did hire a doula, which I think is going to be very helpful so they can at least help us through the process of labor and delivery and give us techniques and kind of guide us through, you know, know what kind of things to expect they're not there to give us like a medical advice but just really to be a support person so hopefully that's going to help but I think this being my first I just really don't know what to expect when it comes down to labor and delivery and postpartum and what that all is going to look like but I'm super excited to just have the baby here and finally meet him like out on the outside like yes I've been feeling him like kick and move and stuff in my belly and I talk to him and stuff but I think it's just gonna be so so different when he's actually like outside and other people can meet him too I'm super excited for that okay next question is what are your plans for when baby arrives? Now, I feel like this could go two ways. I'm not sure which way this person was intending to ask, but in terms of content and stuff, so like I said, this is going to be the last like 
formal sit down Friday video for a little while. I do plan to take a little bit of a break to kind of let my body rest because let me tell you, everything is so much harder in the third trimester. Just even sitting here talking to you, I feel out of breath as you can probably hear. So I do plan to take a little bit of a rest time and start preparing my body fully for labor in the next couple of weeks. I am pre-filming this, so it is a little bit earlier than I actually am in my pregnancy. I think you'll be seeing this around 36, 37 weeks. Yeah, I'm going to take a little bit of a break from like formal videos that, you know, I kind of feel more obligated to have up as my once a week post and kind of turn that more into vlogs, life updates, and you know, more casual things that I can like kind of take a little bit of an easier route to edit and film. It's not as like mole well, where I have to like sit down, edit, film, that kind of thing. Vlogs are much more casual for me. So going to start doing like more vlog life updates. So not really going anywhere, but it's just not going to be like a formal video every Friday at 5 p.m. So if you wanna still keep up, be sure to subscribe and there'll be like lots of vlogs and stuff that, you know, will be up when I get them up kind of thing. I'm not going to commit to it. And I think I'll probably do that for at least the first month that the baby is here. So probably resume like more formal videos in September, depending on how things go, of course. So that's kind of the plan. Content wise, lots of vlogs coming. I do have, like I do plan to do a birth vlog. I'm not really sure how that's gonna go. Again, like I said, I have no idea what to expect, how much I could film in the hospital, that kind of stuff. So I hope to do a birth vlog, a birth video of what I can share, of what I want to share. And then like I have some postpartum video ideas. So it's just like coming down to like finding the time and energy to film them. So that's kind of what's going to happen content wise, prepare for a lot of vlogs and then kind of resuming more um, actual formal videos in about September-ish. But again, like if I feel like sitting down and filming, you know, my birth story, my postpartum update, another Q&A, a night routine, something like that with the baby, then that's kind of like where I'm at. It's just gonna be super flexible as we kind of transition in this time in a big life adjustment. In terms of like actual life when the baby arrives, I think our plans, I'm hoping for obviously like a natural delivery as natural as possible. We'll see how that goes. But hopefully that only means we're in the hospital for about 24 hours, maybe 48 hours. So we'll be home relatively soon. I'm kind of hoping to keep it uh, just between Damon and I for the first couple of days so we can kind of get our legs under us and adjust with a baby, just being home and getting comfortable in our home with a baby and like somewhat of a routine. Like it's not gonna be a routine, but like, you know, just adjusting to like, oh, the baby's um, eating kind of schedule, cluster feed, sleeping, and then, you know, have immediate family over. It kind of depends on the timing though, because I know Damon's family is visiting at the end of July, kind of early August, right around our due date. So if baby does come early, then I really want his grandparents to be able to come meet the baby because we probably wouldn't be able to get out to Saskatchewan to visit them, which is like a province over from us. It's about like eight hour drive. So I know we won't be able to get out there and visit them like right away after the baby is born. And I feel like that's super important for me and him for his kind of out of town family members to have that opportunity. So it depends if we're gonna have visitors right away or not, kind of on the timing. But if that timing doesn't align, then I'm kind of hoping just to have only immediate family in the first like first couple weeks, I wanna say. And then I don't know about like <laughs> beyond that, I haven't really thought about it that much, but kind of I think during the holidays, like uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas and stuff is where we'll kind of start to, you know, have other people over meeting him, larger groups kind of thing, but trying to keep it very like close family and small kind of in between those times. So that's kind of our plan once baby arrives, I guess. Okay, next question is, is baby head down yet? Honestly, I don't know. I think so, but the last couple times I've been to the doctor and they've like tried to feel for baby's position, they couldn't quite tell. And I do have an anterior placenta, so I don't know if that kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to tell exactly what position baby is in. So he is either diagonal right now, kind of like up here, his head might be up here and then kind of like down, or they're suspecting he is head down. 
on my 20 week ultrasound he was head down but they have a ton of time to like be flipping and flopping all over the place between then but they said they weren't really concerned until i'm about that 37 week mark and then they really want to make sure that you know baby is head down starting to be engaged um in case he does come early so that's kind of where we're at with that i think he's head down because i can feel like more hiccups or like smaller movements like little hands kind of down lower i have a lot of pelvic pressure most of the time like sitting standing um, laying down is about the only comfortable position for me right now because it just takes so much pressure off my pelvis and i have a lot of more like higher kicks and like bigger movements up at the top here so i feel like he's head down but we're waiting official confirmation on that but like the doctor said they're not really concerned until i kind of reach that 37 week mark where you know labor could happen at any point next one is what are your third trimester symptoms exhaustion i would say is my biggest one i know a lot of people say oh like your first trimester basically mirrors your first trimester but other than exhaustion like i don't feel like my first and third are the same the first felt really slow to me I wasn't really that nauseous or sick, thankfully. I was very, very lucky with that. Um, I was pretty tired in the first trimester, but like it was a different tire than this. Like I just feel so squished and out of breath and like exhausted, like little things like vacuuming or steam mopping or folding laundry or even making the bed makes me exhausted. So, and I just like feel heavy all the time. So I would say exhaustion is like my number one biggest symptom. Secondly, sore feet. Again, you're kind of, because like you're carrying obviously a baby, your balance kind of shifts. So I feel like my plantar fasciitis has kind of, I don't know. It's like, it doesn't hurt where it normally does, but like more on the balls of my feet which makes walking, standing, everything else so much harder. I like, I wanna be walking, but like honestly going for like one to two K walk really takes me out on my feet in terms of that. Like they're so sore afterwards and even into the next day. Uh, heartburn slash acid reflux a little bit. I don't know if it's like really heartburn. I would say more acid reflux, I guess. Just if I like eat something and then like sit down or kind of thing, like I just, I could like feel it kind of sitting in my throat. Like it's just so squished and like so close to, you know, my throat now, like my stomach. So I just feel like drinking, like if I drink lots of water, if I chug water, I can like feel it. Or if I like, yeah, anyway. So acid reflux is definitely another one. But other than that, I think that's like my main three, I don't know, third trimester pregnancy symptoms, like, aches and pains as you get bigger everything's just a little bit more uncomfortable but i don't think i've had anything like big in terms of third trimester symptoms next question is what are you doing to prepare for labor honestly probably not as much as i should be doing not gonna lie like i said i'm trying to go for walks curb walking that kind of stuff but honestly the exhaustion is killing me like just not having motivation to do things and to exercise and even like to even walk like my feet just hurt so that's really been hard i think for me like i want to walk and i want to do that stuff but just the exhaustion and the aching feet make it so so difficult i have started drinking a little bit of raspberry leaf tea and mixing that with like some lemonade and stuff so i'll have like iced tea every once in a while or maybe like a cup of hot tea before bed honestly that's kind of it i do have a birth ball i guess so i do that like little exercises and i try and stretch my hips out when i can and keep everything loose and flexible and all of that jazz but i'm not doing like i don't know any hypno things or eating dates or whatever like i i don't really know the efficacy of that same with the raspberry tea like it's only because i kind of like it like we found a really nice one that has like raspberry and the raspberry leaf in it so it tastes fruity and so i'm like okay well it can't hurt but i honestly don't know if it's like actually going to help with labor i think the biggest thing people say is like walking and stretching so that's what i'm trying to do the most and that's kind of what i'm doing we also like i said hired a doula so we're meeting with them we have like two prenatal appointments and then she'll be there for the birth kind of going through that we did take also one birth class like way back when like when i was like 20 22 weeks we at least know what's gonna go on we have an idea of like medical interventions that could happen but i'm not taking like a in-person physical birth course where they give you like birthing techniques and like things for your partner to do like i just feel like that 
is not like really our thing, our vibe, and it's a little bit hokey for me. So we opted out of that and we just did like an online one to kind of understand, you know, the stages of labor, the medical interventions that can go on with labor and kind of things to expect when you go to the hospital. And that's pretty much it. Let me know if you guys have any other techniques or something that I should be doing. The only other thing I've done to like prep for labor is I'm reading Ina May's Guide to Childbirth right now. It's more like geared towards like a natural childbirth I guess and like just like stories of other people's births so you kind of like can prepare what to expect but yeah so I've been reading that and I think I don't know if that's like really helping a lot but at least it's like preparing me I think labor is like people say a lot a mental game so if I kind of know what to go in with then hopefully that will help and I guess just getting rest is the next biggest thing that I've been doing to prep for labor. Next question is biggest difference between life before you were pregnant and now obviously not having the motivation and the energy to do a lot of things like I feel like I definitely thrive off of like you know productivity and like getting stuff done and off my to-do list but now I find that a lot harder it takes me a longer time to even like get out of bed and get ready in the morning just because I am slower to move so definitely not as like motivated active energy kind of I don't know vibe honestly I don't think too much has changed though like we still go out we still do things I still grocery shop I still clean the house I still make videos and TikToks and all of that stuff I stopped playing ringette early so I haven't been doing a ton of exercise unfortunately which definitely Sucks. I am so excited to get back into that hopefully in the fall when my doctor gives me the all clear to start exercising again like vigorously well not vigorously but you know like more than just like walking and stuff but I think and then like diet I guess would be the other big life changes I love you know having sushi poke bowls can't have that at the moment like just kind of being more mindful of you know what I'm eating and having to take a prenatal every day but that's honestly so so minor and I think that's like really all that's like changed I don't think anything else is like super changed that much we still you know we don't have any kids yet so we've been able to still have kind of most of our freedom uh, going and doing things obviously I'm like limited I can't really like hike right now I can't you know do anything like super physical and active but for the most part I think our life has pretty much stayed the same the next question is any pregnancy must-haves honestly I don't think I have a ton off the top of my head I didn't like do a whole lot different for like pregnancy than like normal life I would say probably a pregnancy pillow I did wait until I was like oh 18 20 weeks almost to get one and that honestly was like a game changer I do find that really comfortable to sleep at night especially like I said laying down is probably my most comfortable position so just trying to keep my legs kind of supported and I feel like that's been really helpful my birth ball I've been using a ton but again I don't think you really need it until like your third trimester that's when I got it not something that I needed throughout my whole pregnancy I definitely tried to stay away from like maternity specific clothes I have two maternity dresses and like some nursing bras and that's pretty much it I just bought like more regular clothes in like a size up that being said you guys know I am a fan of Lululemon so anything in their super high-rise line which apparently is hard to get a hold of right now is like a lifesaver i definitely lived in mine i have one size up in the super high rise and that has basically helped me through yes i could technically fit in my regular size but it is a little bit tight and squishy other than that i haven't really done any like have any like pregnancy specific products maybe a good belly oil i use bio oil and then I have one from like a local shop that's kind of more natural but yeah I think that's really all that I've been kind of using during the pregnancy that's like very pregnancy specific uh, next question is does this pregnancy make you want to have more kids which I find such a interesting question when people ask oh are you gonna have more kids after this one when I haven't even birthed this one yet so I would say like yes based off of this pregnancy just because like it has been relatively easy in like the perspective of pregnancy and you know you hear people say like they've been so so sick and you know their symptoms are really I don't know severe or you know there's 
complications. It could be a hard pregnancy. I've had a very like easygoing, mild, low risk pregnancy, which I'm so lucky and thankful for. So based off of this, I would suppose I would say yes. However, I don't know if I would like jump right into it kind of thing because it is still hard being a pregnant. Everything does take a long time, I feel like, because you're so out of breath and you're so tired and nothing fits and sometimes it's just demotivating. But based off this one, I, I would say yes, I guess so. Like I said, not really having plans for another one right away. Next question is, are you going to share a baby on your YouTube or social channels? Now, I have kind of given this more thought as we enter our third trimester i probably will share a little bit but i do want to try and keep most of that private because again like i'm trying to make that choice for my baby and i don't want to make that choice for them you know to be on the internet and stuff and i know there are some really weird people out there so i don't want to put my child in you know a awkward or unsafe position like i think it'll be incorporated in to the vlogs or my TikTok in some aspects, but not like they'll be like a main part of the vlog or it won't be like necessarily a family channel. Like I still want it to be very much my channel and stuff. Like they'll maybe be in vlogs or maybe I'll talk about them in videos or in vlogs or something like that, but not like necessarily sharing them, I think is kind of where I want to go with that. And again, until they can make their own decision on whether they want to be on the internet and, you know, kind of more so understand the repercussions of that. I think I'll try and keep that, you know, kind of as private as possible. The next question is, do you think the baby will come before or after his due date? So he is due in August, August 9th, which is actually my birthday as well. Pretty ironic that it could be on my birthday, but honestly, I think it's like 10% of people actually give birth on their due dates. So I don't know if like, <laughs> I'm really banking on him being here on August 9th. I kind of have a feeling it'll be before. I kind of am hoping it's gonna be before just because I know as you get into you know that 40 plus weeks everything is just super uncomfortable and you're very done being pregnant by then so I also want to try and avoid induction if possible and I know they will want to induce around that 40 41 week mark but I also don't want to like set my mind to that because then I'll be very sad and like stressed if it doesn't happen before then I don't know everyone my whole pregnancy has kind of been like oh there's like no way you're gonna carry to 40 like it's probably gonna be early so I don't know I feel like I've just kind of had that in my head but also at the same time like my mother's intuition feels like he's gonna be early like I literally wanted to have things like nested by 20 weeks I wanted to have my hospital bag packed but early and stuff like that so I don't know I just have like a feeling I just like want to be prepared I want to have like freezer meals stocked and the pantry restocked and that kind of stuff in case he does come early but again I don't want to get like stuck in that mindset yeah I I would say I'm hoping early maybe around the 38 to 39 weeks would be like ideal for me if I could choose if I could choose a date the baby comes when he's going to be ready next question is weight gain and stretch marks have you been dealing with like changing body image so I've definitely gained a lot of weight pre-pregnancy. I was pretty petite, gained about 30 pounds at 33 weeks. And that is definitely a lot for me, I feel like. A lot of people say, you know, it's only belly, you're gonna bounce back because like you're young and you know, you're active. I don't know if I was like that active, to be honest. I feel like I could probably have done more throughout my pregnancy. Definitely, yeah, gained, you know, a fair amount of weight. I know the recommended is technically between 25 and 35 pounds but I will definitely be over 35 pounds. I feel like by the end, especially if I carry like full term or over term, but I still try and eat, you know, as healthy as possible and exercise when I can and, you know, do my best. But I do know that weight gain is a very natural part of pregnancy. And especially because I was probably more on the petite side that I was going to gain a little bit more weight in order to, you know, carry the baby. And that's what the baby needs. So trying to remind myself of that as well. As for stretch marks, I did get a few of them um, on my belly and then again on my legs, kind of on the like the inner thigh part, which I was like kind of shocked about. And I just noticed those the other week. Again, like I said, I don't think you can really prevent stretch marks. Like you can, you know, lotion. I've been lotioning twice a day or like oiling my belly 
twice a day and you know doing my best there but it was kind of inevitable because there's just so much growth and stretching i feel like for me personally like before i was like very fit and very lean i would say so i definitely had a lot to like gain and stretch so i'm not surprised that i got stretch marks and again it also is a little bit genetic i kind of will be interested to see once like i give birth and my belly actually goes down to see how many kind of are there slash remain but that's kind of what i've been doing to prevent stretch marks and kind of like my weight gain so far Next question is, are you nervous about postpartum slash recovery? I would definitely say yes. I think that was like the biggest thing I've been nervous for this entire time. Like even like in the beginning of my pregnancy, I was more worried about postpartum. I think a lot of people have, that are like close to us have come around to, you know, understanding pregnancy and postpartum a little bit more. A lot of her family, this is going to be their first grandchild, great grandchild, etc. And I think my biggest like anxiety fear is like postpartum depression and anxiety and then just like adjusting to life and you know all that that hormone fluctuation I think I am already a pretty type a anxious person I would say which is not the best I will admit that but I just feel like that would make me more susceptible to postpartum anxiety and depression so I really am kind of nervous for that I have researched into it like what signs and symptoms to watch out for but at the same time I don't really want to be like on a medication either i know it's there to help but like personally i just don't want to do that if i can avoid it and then just like people coming to visit baby i know this baby is so so loved and everybody wants to see it immediately but at the same time like i feel like my motherly instincts i'm just like i also need to bond with the baby and so does damon and i just want to have that time and make sure that we have established that before you know other people are coming in and like grabbing the baby and holding it and all that stuff. I just like feel a little bit anxious for that. And recovery, like it depends what happens. Like I am not great with medical things. Like I can't think about it like needles and surgery and things like that so depending if you know we have more of a natural birth or kind of what happens if there's an emergency c-section i'm a little nervous about that kind of recovery and just like being sore and bleeding like c-section is still considered a major surgery so i know the recovery for that will be difficult and even with you know a natural birth i think recovery is still going to be difficult and there's obviously a lot of bleeding and things like that and changes in your body so i'm a little nervous for recovery and just like I don't know having people here and trying to recover and you know rest and things like that it's kind of nervous for postpartum but hopefully like everybody says like the love for your baby just kind of like offsets that last question is how are you prepping for baby to come home slash are you nesting yes we've definitely nested a lot our landlord is actually selling this house so we don't know if we're going to have to move yet at this point in time so i've actually done a ton of cleaning anyways because we had to prep it to be shown and do photos and you know walkthroughs and tours and all of that stuff so i would say the space is pretty clean we cleaned out a whole bunch of stuff got rid of stuff that we didn't need which is great otherwise like yeah just like i don't know folding clothes and washing things and sanitizing items i guess would be like prepping for baby and like nesting cleaning out the closets making sure that we have room for his stuff and all of the other things we've accumulated like this chair there's a crib there's a dresser so definitely the apartment is feeling a little bit smaller than it was other than that i don't think we've done like too much I, like just touch-ups around the house like it, like i said we're renting so it's not like i have to you know redo the floors or like rearrange the furniture because there's really not a lot of space for this to go to be honest and I'm kind of thankful for that. In terms of like courses and stuff, I really still need to take a sleep course. That's something I wanted to do, but we haven't like taken any like newborn care specific courses. We have some books on it. I don't know. I've just been like researching online kind of like newborn care. I feel like TikTok also, like you have to sort through the information, but TikTok has like some good resources. Like there's some actual like good reputable people. Same with Instagram. Like I feel like a lot of that information can be found online now. So I wasn't in a hurry to take a specific newborn care course, but I mean, we'll see if that changes and the baby comes home and we're like, oh my God, I have no idea what to do. Then 
you know, obviously we can look into that. I mean, not that I have an idea now of like really what it's gonna look like, but theoretically, yes, I know, you know, basic care things for baby, but I think it's gonna look a lot different once the baby is actually here. That is all the questions that I received. So thank you to everyone who asked questions and thanks so much for watching this video. It's not goodbye, but it is see you later. And again, like I said, I will be doing more casual videos, casual vlogs and kind of uploading when I can. So be sure you're subscribed because there's not going to be a very set schedule. So if you don't want to miss any videos, then you can also hit that notification bell and be notified when I do post, but wishing you guys all the best. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in our next video whenever that might be. Bye.